Algebra 2 Honors, 14.4, Verifying Trig Identities. We just learned a lot of this yesterday, so we're going to tie it all together. A uh, strong recommendation when you're doing this is to have these sitting nearby. because they may come in handy. So now we have an equal sign in between. We're going to verify. What that means is mess with one side of the equation until it looks like the other side of the equation. I just got rid of my identities that were sitting up there, but we'll somehow survive. So one of the things I like to do, and I'm going to stop writing my theta in just to save time, is to break everything down into sine and cosine. I'm just going to ignore this for a while. It'll stay there. So now I've got these together. I can write it as sine squared minus sine squared cosine squared all over cosine squared. I'm going to factor sine squared out of the top. I'll be left with 1 minus cosine squared over cosine squared. Since sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, 1 minus cosine squared equals sine squared. So we can rewrite this as sine squared times sine squared over cosine squared, which is the same as tangent squared. And this time I'll actually write in my thetas because it's my last step. I put a little check mark. We have verified it. We have proven that they match up. That's all we're doing. This comes in very handy when we get to calculus, so we're well ahead of the curve, but it's, it's like a puzzle to me. Can you manipulate one side so that it looks like the other side? A lot of people get bothered. They say, I could never have done that. I would have done it a totally different way, to which I say, great. I have no idea what other way you would do this. I'm just going to go play with it. And yeah, you can always do it a different way. Maybe you want to mess with this side. Maybe you want to do something else to that side. I don't care. You can do whatever you want. Uh, let's see if I can use this other identity. Tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. Something tells me this isn't going to work, but this is the whole point. So we try things. Tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1. Now, would I want to sub that in? Probably not, but let's see what happens. So now I have this. Well, let's factor that. No, that's not going to work. So let's see if we can do something else. I think that might have worked, but I didn't like it. Wasn't working well for me. And what about sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1? And then negative sine squared would equal negative 1 plus cosine squared. No, I don't think that's going to take me anywhere any either. So here is just a good example. You're going to have to play with this. You're going to need a separate sheet of paper. You're going to have to make sure you try lots of different combinations. I like my sine and cosine.
personally, but you never know where it's going to take you. Let's try it from this side. Sine squared over cosine squared times sine squared. Well, sub that in, see where it takes us. Sine squared over cosine squared minus sine squared cosine squared over cosine squared. Oh, look at that. Tangent squared theta minus sine squared theta. And I know I just cheated. I basically unwrapped the first problem, but you never know which way is going to get you there. It's a puzzle. Sometimes it can be very frustrating. Walk away, come back, try them again later. Here's another one. This one, go ahead and work on both sides. Most teachers say don't. Most teachers say not just work on one side at a time. But I look at this and I see sine over cosine times cosine over sine. And I know you're going to end up with 1. So let's see if we can make this side equal 1. Looks like an identity to me. Tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. If I subtract tangent squared from both times, I get 1 equals secant squared minus tangent squared. 1 equals 1. Done. A lot of people look at this and say, oh, I would have changed everything into sine and cosine like you did last problem. That would work too. That would work perfectly fine. Let's try that way. 1 over cosine squared minus sine squared over cosine squared equals sine over cosine times cosine over sine. We already did that part. We know that's going to cancel out. What about this other side? I have a common denominator here. I just figured out 1 minus sine squared equals cosine squared. Cosine squared over cosine squared equals 1. That's done. I mean, you want to go ahead and show another step. Be my guest. But as long as it's clear and I can understand it, that's all you need to do. So I hopefully have given you some ideas, but really until you're out there practicing, these are very tricky problems. They get a lot harder in pre-calculus, but this is a very good start for you. So give it a shot. Good luck.